Sports betting has been around for a long time, even if data of the first bet seems untraceable. We can think of the Greeks, inventors of the Olympic Games, where it was not uncommon for spectators to bet among themselves on the winners. Over the years, pool staking and betting has been the traditional way of gambling in Nigeria. Recently, the emergence of sports betting has increased due to the various betting websites that have become famous. Due to this latest development, sports fanatics now take their interest in sports to a greater level, having realized the financial benefits that could be gained from predicting match scores. Unfortunately, addiction sets in along the line when one has no self-control and it then leads them to the dark tunnel of gambling. This is Sam, a 35-year-old man who has been through the ups and downs in the virtual world of sports. He loves to forecast games and put his money where his mouth is. Along the line, his love for forecasting and betting led him into the dark side of addiction. It all started um 2015. Okay, I I finished service um 2013. So between that time I was job hunting and um I've been a fan of um sports growing up right from childhood. But I have a neighbor that uh, woke up to me that he won 140,000 with 100 naira. So I said that time I knew little about sport betting, but I don't know how it works. So I had to sit him down. I was like, how did you come about this? What did you play? How did it work out? So he held the coupon in his hand. I made a ticket. So he showed me, saying, I picked this team, I picked this team, I picked that team. So I was like, oh, I saw some other things there. So what does this one mean? What does two mean? What does... So he was the one that put me through the fundamental part of the sport betting, right? OK, if you pick one, one means the home team to win. If you pick two, that means the away team to win. If you pick GG, that means both teams to score. So I took my time to understand that he only put me through how it's what, how you stake. So um, I had to do further research myself. So I took my time to walk into the shop. So my first few weeks that I didn't play, all I do was just to make friends, observe how things work. So um, I was there, I see people placing bets. So I start asking questions. I even asked the cashiers that, okay, if I pick this, if I pick this. But I remember vividly then, there were limited um, market options then, unlike now that we have vast uh, majority of market options. Like I said, I don't have what I'm doing, so my income is so limited. All I do is, um, when I start playing, I use, I use my pocket money to okay. place bets. So, um, and um, then to stake, the minimum stake is 100 naira, so I can still feel like, hey, the money I would use to buy Richard card and call friends, why can't I use it to place bets? So that's how it all started. And then it was fun. Some places I would have just one game that would um, make it a lost bet. I'll put the game, I'll be like, oh, I'm so close. And that will be like, you can go further, you can try more. So it goes on on and on like that. I could remember vividly my first win was um, a 5,000 naira with 100 naira. Oh, wow. I got motivated, yes. So the 5,000 then was like um, a gold, oh. like, wow, this is cool business. With 100 naira, the multiple interests that comes or um, that is accrued to it, I was like, wow, this is good business. So I started going deep. And um, over time, when I started looking into the virtual. When you walk into the shops, you see a lot. So it's like the place is more like um, I maybe like um, let me just say the like a theater place. where you just see all different kind of. You see people that walk in, say this thing has destroyed my life. You see people that say, "Wow, I don't chop." So 
You have different kind of things that motivate you. I, I remember then there, there was a day Jai walked in and um, his first game, he plays bet on the virtual, that football virtual, and his first game with uh, 100 Naira, he won 35,000. Oh, so wow. that really intrigued me. I was like, what exactly did he play? How did he know that um, all these games would come true? So he said he has been studying it. We became friends and over time, I started playing the virtual too. From all the games, he got more interested in a virtual game called Color Color. It's a game of numbers. So um, you predict the numbers um, that will be displayed after some rounds of um, events. So, yeah. And um, we have different colors, but my interest is always on the numbers because um, if I predict two numbers to appear, in out of six uh, outcome, possible outcomes, I would, with 100 now, I would win 6,005. Really? So I always aim higher because uh, I just feel if I use 100 now to win, if I play the call, I win 300. Mm -hmm. So I would be like, this 300, they can take it back anytime. Mm -hmm. But there's this thing um, that punters always believe in that if I can win an huge amount of money, even before they will take it back, I can leave. Mm. So I always aim high. So if I win such kind of amount, I won't stay. Mm. I will go then still come back the other day. But in the long run, if you come back another day, it's just like you're just delaying when they will mm. get the money, money back. back. Many can attest to the money draining virtual games. Uh, you see that virtual, eh? I will not tell you the lie. The truth about it is that that virtual is a killing machine. If you want to die, go there. You will die easily. If you have 50,000 in your pocket, in the next five hours, if you don't take time, you will borrow money out of that place. That one is not game. That one's like, it's dice, like two people playing dice or four people playing dice. That one, I, that one is, <laughs> is a killing machine. I don't go there. Except you just have money you want to waste. You go there, go and waste it. Money you don't budget for. But if you want to make something in life, I prefer to book game and wait for the results after 90 minutes. When Sam places bets, he spends about 2,000 Naira. But it increased when he started working for a bet company. In a month, let me just um, approach it. In a month, I can spend like 2,000, 3,000. But over time, when I started working, I spent more than that. So let me just say, when I started in the year 2015, I just spent 2,000, 3,000 mm. to place bets okay. in a month. Wow. When I started working, um, the mentality of playing bets with 100 Naira left, I was like, if I would choose, uh, the, the idea behind it is, I was like, if I, if I could choose 20 games, yeah. And um, 19 of it, I could predict correctly, just one of it got spoiled. So why stress myself with 100 Naira? Mm. So why not pitch something lesser and stick with a huge amount of money? Wow. So I started experimenting that. When I started, it was working fine. Mm. I could play a single bet with a 5,000, place a single bet with a um, 2,000, Reality dawns on Sam when he lost 200,000 Naira on a single bet, but continues to play. The highest amount I would say that I've stayed to it is it 200,000. 100,000. 200,000 200, at, at a go. At a go? Yes. Wow, and tell I us lost. about that. I lost. You lost it? Yes. Wow. I lost it at the nature of time. Okay. So, um... On that day, I am a Mario fan though, so I stayed on my team to win. Wow. And um, that day, Mario was winning. I, I could remember Mario played Newcastle or so. Mario was winning. And um, at injury time, I think 90 plus, Newcastle equalized and um, the match ended 1 1. The money wasn't mine. Several things came to my mind. Like, I, I was like, I wish I didn't do this. Why did I do this? How can I get this money back? I, what will I tell the owner? It got so bad, he borrowed a lot of money 
and spent 90% of it on bets. Borrowing money to place bets. You borrowed money to? Yes, I did. What was the highest amount you borrowed? 450. 450,000, yes. 90% um, of it was um, to place bets. Now, for me to, be, to have been able to secure 450,000, I never knew what I wanted to do with it. Over time, I'd, uh, I have borrowed quite a lot of money. And um, the day I sat down to, you know, you always be afraid to like put your pen to paper to just write down the figures. But the day I did that, I noticed it's over one million, one wow. point something million. Yes. Wow. And um, everything was within two years. Two years? Yes. Everything was within two years. And um, for all the companies that were able to give me loans, you know, it comes with interest. Then if you default, you have further interest. Mm -hmm. So the one million I mentioned is accrued interest on loans have defaulted. Wow. So uh, as I speak with you, I'm still paying back. Wow. So it shows the extent, the damage um, it has caused. So the day I sat down and um, I put down names of each company I'm holding and the amounts with the interest. So, and then um, individuals that I owe, then uh, I found out that, hey, this thing has turned to six figures. So that's when it comes on me that I, I realize that this is not uh, fun anymore. It's, it's, it's an issue. In Nigeria, football betting has a long history that can be traced to colonial times when pool betting was popular, especially among the elderly, retired workers, and the unemployed. Since the 1920s, younger people have taken up betting on the results of football matches, including European football leagues. In the betting shops, you will find different kinds of people in clusters discussing either the Premier League, Champions League, the La Liga, boxing, and all types of sports with their passion for the game increasing every day, having high hopes of winning the jackpots. There are factors responsible for increased football betting among youths in Nigeria. It keeps my hope alive. When the government are not trying and I don't have any other way, I don't have any other person to help me. It's only the bet that can help me. As you can see, the country is very rough, you understand? The government is not trying, you understand? So at least helping the youth, you know, so some people cannot steal, you know, like, like me, I can't steal. So I just switch to you know, to make money for myself. In the past, people watched sports with keen interest based on loyalty to a particular club. But today, that is no longer the case with many. Like me now, I'm a driver now. For the past two months now, I don't have a car again. I don't have any bus that I'm using to walk. But I'm surviving with this <laughs> because I don't play visual game. Or I only play uh, the game I will book and bet. Maybe Madrid is playing uh, uh, Asazuna. I bet it Madrid to win. Uh, Chelsea is playing Watford. I bet Chelsea to win. I collect like five games like that. I put like 500 or 1,000. The game gives me something like 13,000 or 8,000. As the game is going, maybe I play eight games. Six I've played. They are giving me a crash out like 5,000. I'll just collect the 5,000, crash out. I book another one. Out of that one, I sent a little money for my family. That was how I've been coping for the past two months now. Because there is no, no, no hope. Uh, I'm, not an addict, I'm not an addict to betting. It's just like, I just sat down and I studied and I said, okay, I can make something out of this. Not that maybe, if I have a work that I'm doing now, I will not sit down here and say I want to start betting because I'm a driver. I'm on the road now. Maybe it's when I close. And if I go to work, Monday to Saturday, is it that night I will not start I'm tired now, we're going to the last. But for now, now, let me just use this one as another avenue to make money. There are those ones who have become addicted to this behavior. Sam is one of them. And every addict shows some vital signs. There's um, an attribute with someone that is addicted to gambling. 
and that is um, you always find your way around things, and that involves lying to people close to you, people you know. Um, if you tell them strange things, they will believe you. When you say that someone has gambling addiction, there are certain things you see in someone that has gambling addiction. Is this um, you see that they have this strong compulsive use? to this craving to always bet money and um, you see them that they neglect other activities that they used to find pleasurable spending most of their time gambling they are uh, hide the fact that they are gambling from their family members they are they feel guilty they've lost vast sums of money sometimes they have to take loans and um, they still believe that if they keep gambling they will be able to recover some of the money that they've lost. So those are some of the features you've seen that um, it affects their career, affects their family. Addiction is more, it's more like um, an eye. You'd, you have that feeling that you'd, uh, your eye on something. So you feel uncomfortable until you'd place bets. A report revealed that about 60 million Nigerians between the ages of 18 and 40 are involved in active sports betting. They spend almost 2 billion naira on sports betting daily. And this translates to about 730 billion naira annually. Betting may appear to be a way to make quick money, either as a betting operator or as a gambler. But addiction sets in along the way. Usually most people, when they start, they start for fun. They start with um, funds that they can afford to lose. But for some people, it progresses beyond that. And then they start to bet sums that large sums of money they have. Um, when they can't bet or they are prevented from betting, they start to become very uncomfortable. Um, they spend most of their time engaged in either betting or trying to get money to bet. And um, they start to suffer harm in terms of their career. Um, they get into debt. They keep having, uh, they find it unable, they're unable to control their betting. When you see those signs, those are signs that um, the person could possibly have um, a gambling addiction or sports betting addiction. Are there consequences for addiction? Gambling addiction has significant comorbidities with psychiatric yeah. conditions. Yeah. Um, as you might imagine, if you've borrowed a large sum of money and lost it to sports betting, there's a high tendency to, for you to have clinical depression. It could also progress to having suicidal thoughts and attempted suicide. You could also have post-traumatic stress disorder, you could have sleep problems, sexual dysfunctions, it could predispose to even psychotic breakdowns. So um, having a gambling addiction predisposes you to having a whole lot of other psychiatric um, comorbidities. Sharing my experience now, I am someone that loves sleeping very well, I do have sound sleep, but when this issue becomes um, a problem, I couldn't sleep well. Wow. Um, there have been different kinds of thoughts. You would start thinking that life is not worth it. You know such kind of things and um, you start thinking of, oh, how am I going to pay this person? So shame comes in, uh, reproach. Loan agency started looking for me, calling my numbers. I had to start changing numbers. I, start, I started withdrawing from people. Because when I had the encounter with um, my family members, I had to change my numbers. Then loan agencies started calling me. I had to start withdrawing. So at that point of withdrawing, you'd um, start, you want to be alone. Like, it's as if these people don't understand you. So you start withdrawing and um, start withdrawing. That's when the suicidal thoughts start coming in and the lights. Sam's family felt disappointed after they found out about his sports bet addiction. At a point, my family gets to know about this. I used to be like um, a favorite child. I used to be like someone they're looking up to, to just uh, bring the name of the family, I to 
to raise the her bar for the family to not to put down the name. But uh, the moment they got to know, I felt like an uh, outcast because uh, I had different kind of things that really put me down. So um, after the session with them, going back, I wasn't myself. Is there a way out of addiction? Since um, we consider um, gambling addiction to be uh, medical and mental disorders, there are treatment modalities that are available and it first starts with you having an assessment. When you are assessed, you're now able to understand the severity of the disorder and the treatment ranges from simple interventions like um, reading a brochure to short interventions to long-term interventions that involve psychotherapy with a therapist so it's there are treatment modalities depending on the severity we have you, you need to talk to a medical professional and then they'll be able to help you with this disorder since it is difficult to convince many that caution is needed it is hoped that sam's experience and many around us are pointers that this craze for quick wealth is at the end of the day counterproductive, including suicide as a result of depression. My first advice would be to everyone that um, you should have a high index of suspicion if you are gambling and then you're finding it difficult to control your sports betting, then you might need to take a step back and um, um, stop gambling for a while. You might have um, difficulty um, controlling your um, sports betting. So before it becomes a full-blown disorder, it's better to know that it's possible uh, that you could get addicted and to reduce it. Now, if you do have a problem with sports betting, it's affecting your schooling, your work, your marriage, your relationship with people around you, then it's advisable that you get some treatment. You could come to any neuropsychiatric center and um, have an assessment done where a treatment modality is available. And lastly, you should tell people around you if you're having this problem. Too often we are too stoic in our culture. We tend to hide things. If you're having difficulty, let your friends and family know and then they will be able to put in place a support system that will be able to help. For people that place beds, this would be my advice. Um, it's supposed to be fun, yes. Um, you can stay on what you like and um, you can have passion for it. You know, people have different kind of um, hobbies. So, but the moment you notice um, you're losing sleep on, over it, the moment you notice it's affecting your health, the moment you, know, you notice it's affecting your relationship because uh, as an addict, and um, the effect of most of these things is you withdraw from your loved ones, you hurt them, you hurt yourself, you your your head status, emotion, your mental state. At a point, you realize you are losing it. So, if at the moment you notice it's getting to that point, you need to speak up, seek help. It's very, very important. In my case, it's, I didn't do that on time. And um, if you are seeking help also, I would advise you to seek help from the right channel. At a point, I, I had to go to religious leaders to seek help. The earlier you stop, the better it is.